very, very important. If you start out funny, don't end up angsty. Lots of webcomic artists do this. It's stupid. <laughs> um, I call it the 3 7 ratio. If you start out with about 30% uh, drama and 70% comedy, you can end up with about 70% drama and 30% comedy. If the ratio is any bigger than that, say 90%, 10%, it's going to be jarring, you're going to lose readers, it's going to really irritate people. Don't make promises you don't intend to keep. And if you, if your first chapter is funny, you're promising a funny story. That's true. Hmm. So don't start, oh, this is so fun, and then go sudden, oh, everyone's dying, all this angst. I think, yeah. I, I think the reason not this fun. is a common, very, very common problem, not just with web comics, with every genre of storytelling, it's easiest like to write. Gun? <laughs> it's easiest to start a story as a comedy, and it's easiest to end a story as a drama. That doesn't mean comedy's better or drama's better. They're both equally powerful, but it is much easier to do comedy with characters that are very well developed, and it's much easier to do drama with characters that are very well developed. So choose what you're doing and don't be lazy. And you have to have a balance. Like, yeah. Personally, I, yeah, Trigun's a great example. It starts really funny. And then it gets like more. I actually really love the parts, you know, I love the drama. But um, it needs to be able to go back occasionally. Go yes. back to the funny and light it up and then go back to the drama. Again, the 3 7 ratio. You can go keep from it. mostly comedy to mostly drama, but you've got to keep, you have to have the drama at the beginning, you have to have the comedy at the end. But it's always good to, you know, try to keep the comedy not dumb. And then it will be so hard to make it dramatic and go back. Um, as far as audience opinions, don't pander, but do listen. Don't draw, you know, fan service in any way, not just the, you know, edgy way. Don't draw fan service just because some, you know, someone or even everyone seems to think it would be a good idea if it's going to damage your story. On the other hand, if it's not going to damage your story and everyone's screaming for something, why don't you listen? <laughs> just, just a thought there. Um, figure out if you can work without needing people. Some, some artists, some authors actually need feedback. If you're one of those, it'll be a lot harder to do backlog without people. And if you're one of those, perhaps you'll need a writing group or a group of friends that read through your stuff and give you feedback before you post it. That could help a lot. I have, I have a friend that needs that feedback very, very badly, which is a hard time for backlog because of that. Um, another reason backlog is good, by the way, is if you notice plot holes three months later, you have time to fix them before you make it public. Because don't go back and change things, because that makes people really, really mad. Um, and you really can't. Once you publish something online, it's there. It's there. It's there. And so you can't really go back. So that's one good reason to outline. Make sure you know where you're going so you don't have plot holes. Because, but it is hard to, to get everything. Anyways. Yeah. Um, um, revisions are great as long as it's private. As soon as you make it public, readers will get mad if you revise. Unless you say from the very, very beginning, this is a draft, I'll be doing it all over again. But in that case, you still had better finish the first draft before you start the second. Don't alienate your readers, yet again. Um, if you need a break, wrap things up temporarily, fulfill promises to your readers. Um, don't, don't delete old archives if you do restart. Mary Mary Melanchthon did that. It lost a lot of readers because people were so mad. Um, and once it's online, try and keep it up. Yes, That's why I haven't up. deleted my other one that hasn't been updated. Like, there was another comic that I loved, Strings of Fate from 2000, etc. She took it down, and I loved it. And I was like, oh, keep it up. Yes. Even if it doesn't stop, it never finished. That's why she took it down. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, don't, don't give them something and take it away. That's mean. You want people who love your work. Don't make them hate your work because you won't let them have it. That's just silly. Um, so, real quick, um, resources, Comic Press, she mentioned, HTML Goodies is a great website if you want to learn to code HTML, free hosting, we went over that, programs, oh, programs, Photoshop is obviously the best, I actually do my comics in InDesign, I, but I'm a professional, I do layout professionally, so um, it's great. But you don't need that. You can actually do everything with the GIMP, which is a free program online. You can download it. Uh, when my hard drive crashed, I was working on the GIMP and my RAM and putting out comic pages. Yeah. I, I didn't have a hard drive. I was saving things on flash drives, but I was using the GIMP. And it doesn't do text that well, but it's workable. Anyway. Glambot is
is a great site for free fonts if you want more fonts. You know, because um, it, sometimes it's nice to have a font that's, I don't know about you guys, but I care about fonts a great deal. I, I will <coughs> download like 200 fonts to try to find just the right perfect one for a title, for a logo, or for the font I want to be writing this particular short story's dialogue in. Um, make sure you choose something readable, but something like that will give you a chance to find a lot of options to find what's readable. Um, if you're if you're writing something in a different language, by the way, just make sure it's clear it's in a different language. You can do it with those thingamajigs, or you can you, yes, the trying to it. Or you can do it by changing the font. That happens too. Or or you can do some other weird things I've seen. Most of them aren't nearly as readable as either of those options, though. So be careful. Um, if you want some great writing advice. Um, Writing Excuses podcast. Fantastic. Listen to it, it's really good. <laughs> if you want some great insight into comics, Understanding Comics by Scott, Scott McCloud. It's a book. Yes, it's Fantastic. It's very, very, very good. Very good. Um, and there's also the Secrets podcast, which is also another writing one. Yes. I love writing podcasts, they make me happy. <laughs> um, it, so you've got everything together, you know exactly what you're doing, you're great, where do you find readers? Start out with webcomic lists like Top Web Comics, Online Comics, Tom Geeks. If you're a girl, you can join that one. Uh, Bell Free, Online Comics, there's, there's a lot. Try those, guys. join them. It's a good idea. Um, <coughs> also, one thing you can do, you can do guest comics or fan art for, um, established comics. for established comics that you really love. And usually they'll provide a link back to you on that page where they post your guest comic or, or your fan art. And that can give you hints and readers, which is happy. Um, another thing I've done is I just email people who do comics I really love and oh so suddenly mention that I have a comic too. <laughs> you know, it, usually it'll come up in conversation and then I wind, I often wind up with a new friend and everything works out great. So, we better go over questions real quick. Anyone have questions? Any questions? Really quickly. Sorry. Um, after this is over, we are in the artist alley. You can come and talk to us anytime if you have questions because it's great to use Google and look things up. But when there's people who are experienced right in front of you, come talk to us. Yes. Yes. Is there anything you want to suggest for like uh, Dojinchi or actual fan comic? Oh, that's the same thing. Dojinchi fan comic. What about it? Any of these things to suggest? Yeah, like I guess the copyrights and all that, or what? Oh, well, right. Dog with Blossoms. Inuyasha Dojinchi. Very, very, very good. <laughs> anyway. I have a fan comic. Uh, the great thing about um, if you're doing anything based on Japanese stuff is that Japan doesn't care, which is great. Disney cares. Uh, Disney owns Marvel now, so they'll care. Um, <laughs> so you have to watch out for that. Um, you can do fan comics for J Japanese things, and they don't mind. Like they have a huge industry that's just fan comics. But um, dojichi. But um, you have to watch out for the American stuff. So be careful. <laughs> okay. Don't don't do too many original characters. Usually people read up for the established characters. She breaks that, but she can get away with it because her original characters are just that cool. <laughs> I'm not biased at all. Yes. Um, with all the uh, information you just listed, um, is there a possibility that the same list is on the websites you are offering? Oh, we, can, um, we don't have this um, information just up on our websites, but if you e go to our websites, you'll find our emails. If you email us, I can just send you a text link of all the stuff we went over. Okay, thank you. <coughs> we gotta go. <sighs> thank you. And if you want to, you can just drop by Artist Alley and you can ask to look at this page and just copy down anything you want anyway.